All right. So the next couple is XOR and two time pad. XOR is a very simple way to scramble data, and by itself, it's not very secure, but it's part of really secure encryption schemes like AES. It combines XOR with other techniques. So XOR is just a way to combine two bits. So if you have two bits and the two bits are the same, the answer is zero. But if the two bits are different, the answer is one. So any stream of bits can be XORed with any other stream of bits. And you do this with the up, uh, shift six up arrow character in Python. The caret, I think they call it. So you can ASCII encode your data like this as a series of bits, and then you can XOR it. So if you XOR A with B, you do it this way, the first bit in A is zero, and the next first bit in B is zero, so you get a zero. Those are both ones, so you get zero. So you end up with the ASCII character number three, which is an unprintable end of text remark. But if you use A, XOR lowercase s, then you end up with something printable, 32, the numeral two. So you can do this in Python. So if I do this, let me make um, xor1.py. All right, so this is going to take the original message and then the key, which is a number. And now I'm going to use the ORD function, which gets the numerical value of that character in ASCII, and then XOR it with the key. That'll give me a numerical result. And then I encode it back as a character, and I print the relationship here. And then I build the ciphertext character by character so you can see it here. And since the ciphertext is often going to be unreadable, I'm going to print it as readable ASCII, but I'm also going to print it as just a hex string, which might be the only way I'm able to see what it is. So let's run that. And so the H went to K, the E went to F. And so with a key of three, the um, input did in fact become readable output. So you can read the ASCII characters and here's the hexadecimal code of those characters one by one. Now, if you encrypt it a second time, that would just be feeding in kfools. So I can easily do that. Um, let's just copy this for XOR2. And then I'm just going to change this to the output of kfool. Oops, got to spell it right. All right. If you run that, uh, wow. Oh, XOR2. There, it goes back. And that's the thing about XOR. One way to read XOR is you take the key and you if there's a zero in the key, you leave it alone. And if there's a one in the key, you flip it. So if you run it again with the same key, it'll take the bits that flipped and flip them back and not change the others. So doing XOR twice undoes itself. So you do not need to write a separate encrypt and decrypt program. The encrypt program is equal to the decrypt program, as long as you have the right key. So you can now encrypt this text with a key of seven. And you can decrypt this text with a key of 19. And now you can decrypt this stuff, which is hexadecimal encoding, that will then turn into a readable sentence. And then you can decrypt images that are encrypted with XOR. This is a single byte, so every byte of the ciphertext that you download, you have to decrypt with the same numerical key. And here's a two byte key, so you have to do it 16 bits at a time and you'll end up with a JPEG image. So you can find the JPEG format and find some bytes in, bits in, uh, sign some bytes in there that you know about. And from them, you can find the key. Here's a four byte key, and this will turn into a zip archive. And so if you Google the format of a zip archive or make a zip archive and look at it, you will find some bytes that you can predict and you can use those to determine the key. So that's XOR. And the other one I wanted to show you here, which I was very pleased, is one I read in this book in the enemy's house. Uh, this really happened to the Russian army. 
The one-time pad is the perfect encryption system. There is no known way to get in, and it seems like there never could be. You have a page of random characters, and each character is used to encrypt just one character of plain text, and you never reuse any of it. So there is no mathematical pattern in the ciphertext at all, and no way to find the key at all. The only thing you can do is somehow steal that um, key, but the key has to be long enough that you can never reuse any part of it, and you have enough key text for every message you're going to send. But what happened in Russia is they ran out of ciphertext, so they started reusing it. And if you, the two-time pad, the one-time pad is essentially perfect, but if you make the mistake of using the same key twice, it becomes very insecure, shattering like glass. So here's a one-time pad. And so let me get this up there. This can be my first one-time pad program. So nano pad one. All right, so I have a key and the key is just this long string of stuff and it really ought to be just random letters. But in this case, I use readable text and here's the plain text and your plain text must be shorter than the key. So you have enough key that never reuse any part of it. So now all I do is the same thing we did before. I just XOR each character in plain text with each character in the key and print that out. So if, if I run this one, all right, it shows you what's happening. Here's four score and seven. Here's unbreakable awesome. Here it's encrypting them one by one to make these things. First byte is 13 and then one. So uh, there you are. And I have an error because I didn't use Python 3. I accidentally used Python 2. All right. Now it's gonna come out right. Here's my string of hex characters. The first one is 13, then one, then 17. And you see that here, there's the 13, the one, and the 17. So this ciphertext is encrypted with the one time pad. And if you use it this way, it's essentially perfect. The only problem here is I didn't really use random characters as the input, which would be better. But if, you, if no one can figure out what the key string is, they can't get in there. So that's fine, but if you encrypt two plain texts, you're going to have a problem. So here you got a known key to decrypt, which is that you just have to uh, repeat what I've shown you already. And here's the crib drag attack, which is what ruined it. So they have a key, and you have just to get you started for this one, I give you a letter. It starts with the word the. And these two messages were encrypted with the same key. So you just have to write a program that will decrypt it. So if I use the, the first three letters of the two messages appear. And now you can guess, you can probably guess that after this comes a space, you can probably guess the next couple of characters of this word. You can probably guess another character down here. This is called a crib drag attack. You take a few, you start somehow with a small portion of it that you can decrypt and then you just extend it by guessing. And as long as you can guess the next character in any of the messages or the key, you can move forward. And that is extremely powerful. So this is a simple crib drag where you just gradually go out here until you find the key. And here's a longer one. And here's a longer one. And you can break them all with that crib drag attack. And it turns out to be kind of a fun program to write. You could keep modifying your program every time you guess a character. I wrote one that'll actually let you put in an index and guess a character and then it prints the answer and you can interactively go back and forth. Um, but you can drag along until you've reversed this one-time pad. Uh, all right. Because of course, it's not a one-time pad, it's a two-time pad. And the, although the one-time pad is extremely secure, the two-time pad is extremely insecure. All right.